Hi, it's Dia. Today is part two of coloring with Crayolas. And in part one, I colored her skin tone. I colored Zodiac Fairy skin tone with only Crayola crayons. Today, I'm coloring her hair. And I accidentally did a flower too, but I, that was supposed to be for part three. But mostly today, we're doing hair. So I was trying to figure out the perfect shade and I kind of went back and forth in the beginning because I kind of wanted her to, be, her to be a redhead, but I didn't want her to be orangey red. So I settled on a color called chestnut, which brings me to some interesting information. Chestnut used to be called Indian red and the color was, the name of the color was changed because of sensitivities. Although it actually had to do with a pigment made from iron oxides often used in the country of India. And so they ended up changing the name to chestnut. And chestnut in regular paints or regular pigments is very similar to Indian red. So I guess they switched the name in the Crayola box. So let me tell you what I'm doing here very quickly. I took the chestnut, uh, AKA Indian red, and I started to do her hairline just to see if I was gonna like the color. And I straight away started to use the blender, meaning the Prismacolor blender. And then I took some lighter sort of burnt oranges and some darker browns just to see what it looked like against her skin tone because her skin tone is very pink and very light and I didn't want to I didn't want to make it almost seem like it clashed so I didn't love the lighter shades but I was stuck with it I really couldn't remove them completely although I did blend it out quite a bit and by the end went over it quite a bit with browns and even black pencil, but you will always be able to see those burnt oranges and sepia colors. So I left certain areas white, as you can see right over there on the top, or a little bit white, just because if I colored it in solidly, it wouldn't look like there was any highlights. And that chestnut color is dark enough that I didn't want to go over all the highlights with uh, a Posca pen or a Signo pen because I had no idea how they were going to go on the top, over the top of this practically pure wax pigment. So once again, Oh, you know what? Right, right there. I had to keep sharpening because those crayons wear down a tip like nobody's business. So if I wanted to get some little fine details, I would use the back of the crayon and they made nice thin lines for a little while until that area got dull too. So you can see where I'm leaving the white areas right there and put, putting some lines through it, uh, that you'll be able to see it a little bit better later. That's gonna look like highlights. The area that's coming up will give you a better idea of what I'm talking about. I, I made her hair wavy in this image. Now you could see me coloring quickly in the, in the dented in area of her hair, meaning when there's a wave, there's a, there's a part that goes in and there's a part that puffs up. The darkest colors will be in the receding areas. And then I would leave the puffed out parts whiter. And then rather than filling in the whole thing, I just went over it with thinner lines. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. So the areas that are filled in now are dented in. Whoop get rid of some of that dust, which there's plenty of. Now oh, there goes my bird in the background telling me that he wants attention. Oh, now I'm making some lines to uh, the shadow areas. 
and hopefully I go back, there we go, making those indented areas darker and then adding just some shadow to the lighter parts, meaning some of those lines. Here's me still attempting to make some colored highlights that I didn't really like and I added a few more just to sort of balance it out. I'm shrugging my shoulders right now. I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. And I didn't want to just leave two little strands in the front. So I had to add a few more. So I started blending with the pencil, with the Prismacolor pencil. Then I thought, Turpinoid. And right about here I started to realize that if you use the turpenoid in certain ways it actually works pretty good on the crayons and it melts that waxy pigment and sort of turns it into another substance. Some of the wax seems to disappear a bit and even even sort of turn into like a paint. So rather than having these scratchy looking uh, crayon marks, it started to look sort of like watercolor paint. And those highlight areas were great because, okay, how do I explain this? Just like with makeup, if you, if you, <laughs> if you want an area to go from darker to lighter, you start at the darker area first. For instance, if you pick up some pigment on a brush, either a paint brush or a makeup brush, and you start to spread it, the darkest area is going to be the area that you touch first. Oh, here's me trying that pencil sharpener one last time. No, thumbs down. I would, I would not recommend that sharpener. Don't even bother trying it. There's not a blade in there. I'm sure it's for kids' safety, but don't bother. Use that cume sharpener. I'll link it below. Um, so yeah, back to what I was saying. The darkest area will be the area that you touch with the pigment first with a brush. And it sort of felt like the same with this, with this terpenoid. So if you touch the darkest area and then you pull the brush away, You'll pull some of the pigment with you, but as it goes farther away, the pigment will get lighter. Now I used a black crayon and went over the indented parts of the waves with black to even make them look a little bit more receded and make them stand out a little bit more. The bigger the difference in the colors between light and shadow, meaning the bigger the contrast, the, the more they will stand out from one another. So I also found out that once you use the turpenoid, just like with the colored pencils, it's much easier to go on top of the areas that you already colored. So I'm going underneath the flower with the black also. Oh, here's another thing. Hair typically doesn't fall in one piece unless you have very, very straight hair. So what I'm doing there is enhancing the areas that go underneath one another. So if you have a piece and another piece that sits on top, the piece that is underneath the piece that sits on top where they meet will be a little bit darker. And I hope I can find another area in this video where I can explain a little bit better. So now I'm taking the, uh, the chestnut and basically coloring the rest of her, of her hair. I thought for a minute that I was just gonna sort of leave it as um, maybe like a beehive hairdo or um, a, a very large bun back there, but it didn't work out and I wasn't liking it. I, I have a tendency to like a lot of detail 
and a lot of probably complicated areas. So I went over the whole thing. And then after I colored it, I blended it all out with terpenoid, which is what I'm doing right now. I moved the camera back a little bit for a wider focus, just so I could see what everything was looking like. And I actually very much like the color with her skin tone. It's, it's warm, it's bright, and it's really pretty. And I'm still kind of fussing around here and trying to make that crayon medium as smooth as I possibly could. And I know that those highlights from the sun interfere a little bit. So I got up and I moved the curtain and it's much better now. The areas around her face and going toward the back of her neck, I tried to make as dark as possible to make the front areas look like they're coming forward a bit. We talked about Indian red slash chestnut before. They also changed the name of Prussian blue quite a while ago and named it Midnight Blue. And this made me kind of sad. They changed the name Prussian blue because they said not a lot of children knew where Prussia was or if Prussia was anything. So they changed it to Midnight Blue. I, I don't know. Maybe I just have a a soft spot for the for the older things and uh, maybe I'm a little nostalgic but I like the old names and once again still blending you can hear that when I blend using this brush it's almost a little scratchy it's a round brush but I've been using it so long that it doesn't have a lovely perfect point anymore which sounds like it would be bad but I, I love it because it's a little scratchy at the end and you'll see why later. Um, it's, it's helping me now a little bit, but I didn't really need it to be uh, perfect at, at this point be, because the areas were so big and they were sort of blending into one another anyway. Um, and I was still getting used to this, this technique, this medium. I'm not used to using crayons, although after doing this, I kind of want to do, I, I want to do everything in crayons. Ooh, I think it was Linda who, who brought up the Icarus. I don't know if you've ever heard of an Icarus board. It's a board that heats up wax mediums like crayons or colored pencils or oil pastels. And it makes some really interesting looking um, art. Ooh, let, let me see if I can find um, some art by that. And uh, let me make sure that that was Linda. Hold on. I'll be right back. Ooh, look how pretty. This was done on an Icarus board. Now, part of me is going to be obsessed with that until I either get or, or try an Icarus board. And I bet you would be great with crayons because I have never used anything as waxy as a crayon. And in all fairness, I know I say that a lot, there are some crayons that are so waxy that there's hardly any color in them. It's like drawing with a birthday candle. So I wouldn't recommend that, but crayons have enough pigment in them that you can get a pretty picture. I sharpened the black Crayola pencil pretty sharp and I started to make some detail or as much as I could because in some areas even though I went over it with the terpenoid it it was it was too far gone it was basically burnished so in the areas that I didn't go crazy on I started to make individual hairs with brown cocoa brown um, the black pencil and uh, the black crayon. And suddenly the remainder of her hair seemed like it was huge. I 
I was already uh, probably at least an hour or two into this into this video and partially uh, you know I take my time a little bit oh here's an example of me going over um, some of that big area with the um, with the pencils and coloring the areas that come down to like a point so they're sort of like like you would find in the tucked in part of the braids you would make those areas darker because they would be covered and sort of pinched together and then the areas that get wider you leave a little bit lighter and only put a few hairs and leave more white or light showing through yeah so the rest of her hair seemed sort of like a big puff and I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with it so I kind of went along with the lines that I had already drawn on the coloring page and I added a couple of different colors a darker brown a lighter brown a black um, just to make it look interesting I didn't want to leave it looking unfinished like that even though I was so tempted to just finish it up and move on to the next area because all in all, that picture right there is probably not even halfway done. Because if you look at every flower, uh, you know, each one of those flowers has to be finished. There's several colors in each flower. Each stem has to be finished. So um, there was a lot more to do. I mean, I was, I was having fun, but I did want to get it done by Tuesday, which is when I normally put out my video, my first video of the week anyway, or even Monday some, some, sometimes. So that twisted up piece of hair, I kind of wanted to make it look like, not quite a braid, but like a true curl. So once again, same as before, the the wider parts and the bumped out parts are lighter and the inside curve is darker. I also wanted to say I was still kind of, whoops, I kind of went off the page here. Sorry about that. I also want to say I was, I was kind of still feeling out these products. We don't color with crayons every day, you know, after we're basically 10 years old. So it was kind of rediscovering them and kind of getting used to the new names. And speaking of new names, in 2003, Crayola had a contest to name four new colors. And they received about 125,000 entries. And out of those entries, they chose four new names for four new colors. They chose Jazzberry Jam, Mango Tango, Inchworm, and Wild Blue Yonder. I think those are fun and interesting names. And I know since then they've added Purple Mountains Majesty, which I, I think that's my favorite one of the bunch. And uh, they have some huge sets now. Getting a, a 64 set when we were kids was the same as getting an iPhone these days. And uh, now they have up to the 200 uh, color bucket. So kids have it made these days. So for the rest of her hair, I went back and forth between what I would consider warm browns. I also used a goldish color for some highlights. And uh, I kind of goofed a little bit. I was acting like there was a light coming from sort of the back of her hair when on her face, I colored it as if the light source was sort of from the upper left so at the end of everything I kind of had to darken up the back of her hair because the moonlight would be wouldn't be coming from two places at once um, so you could see at this point the curls are a little more um, defined I just went over and over and over with different different color browns different color gray well, not really a gray it was a dark slate color I didn't want it to look grayish at all uh, the black the uh, burnt umber colors 
and just went over and over and over and made individual hairs to try to make it look as, I was, I was going to say as real as possible. I just wanted to make her hair actually look like she had a hairstyle and uh, maybe like some curls were blowing in the breeze and uh, that took a minute. Each of each of the hairs um, on the bottom, I kind of wanted to make little curly um, pieces sort of sticking out and separately because we don't have perfectly coiffed hair. The wind does blow and um, we have random hairs like the ones that are sort of falling down by her face. I like the way that looks in pictures and in real life because it's real. So I'm just adding some dark colors around the earrings and her ears and around the curls around her face. So the, the lighter shades and the curls themselves and even her ears um, seem more defined. I also made the areas darker around the flowers and... Uh, they kind of got lighter from there. Oh, you can see I just sharpened that new pencil and went around the flower to make it a little bit shadowy. So the flower looked like it was more in the forefront also. At this point, my hand was starting to get tired. And if I was doing this for an actual commission or a book or something, I would, I would have much, I, I would have much more patience with it. Um, and I try to get these videos done within the same day. And it's probably not actually enough time to do an outstanding job, but I feel like you get the ideas or you get the idea of what I'm trying to accomplish. Let me know what, what you think, because um, I hope my points come across even in my shorter time frame. Thank you so much for watching part two. I will have part three out in a few days and that will be coloring the flowers and the background with Crayola pencils again and crayons. I had a great time doing this. Thank you again for joining me for part two. I hope you give me a like or give me a share with somebody who likes to use Crayolas or crayons in general. And, uh, Thanks for hanging around with me. This has been really fun. So I will see you soon using Crayolas once again. And hugs to everybody out there. Thank you so much. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.